Welcome back to Floki's Models. This build, we're going to be going over the construction of the ZM F4E Phantom. So stay tuned to see how we got to here. Following the instructions, the first thing we start on is assembling of the seats. The frame here is made out of two pieces. Next is building the cockpit floor, sidewalls, and also doubles as the nose wheel bay. This is made up of five pieces and is really solid once all together. This here is the back walls for the pilot and co-pilot seats. Drilling out the back of the co-pilot's instrument panel to add a few wires to. I'm not sure what gauge these are, but I just super glue them into place. I airbrushed some sub assemblies using to me a white, dark sea gray, NATO black, and yellow. I'm gonna do some dry brushing using a mix of Vallejo German gray and light gray. Everything that got airbrushed NATO black is going to get dry brushed this color. That would be both pilot seats and all the control panels on the sides. Vallejo olive gray is going to be used to paint the seat cushions. and Vallejo Sandy Brown is going to be used to paint the back of the seat cushions. A super thin mix of Tamiya Dark Sea Gray is used, and I'm going to use it like a wash, and I paint in between all the black instrument bezels on the instrument panel. I took a length of wire and painted half black and the other half yellow. I then twisted them together to get this alternating black and yellow pattern to use as the grab handles on the ejector seat. Using the kit piece as a template, I bend and cut the wire to size. I sprayed an acrylic clear gloss on the cockpit and then went in and gave it a pin wash using MIG's dark wash. The cockpit is pretty monotone when it comes to color, so anything I can do to add just a little bit more into it and make some details pop is going to help. After the seat cushions have had a chance to dry, I glue them into place. I was surprised how fast this next part went. The assembling of the airframe was really easy.
This separate top piece that has all the fuel ports on it end up having a sizable gap in the rear. There's no sprue gates or anything back there, so I, nothing that I did to make it uh, too short. Seems to be a common problem on this kit from the reviews I've read. I tape up both sides of the gap to keep from getting any putty into the detail that I want to preserve. I remove the tape from the gap and start doing a little bit of wet sanding. Using the tip of a sharp blade, I just open up any of the rivet holes that may have gotten some putty into them. This here is the front part of the engine being assembled. And this is the rear part. The landing gear bays go in really easily and have great locator pins. This is the front end of the air intakes. There's a couple ejector pin marks that need sand in the build, but it's really, really shallow. The air ducts themselves have a seam that would be hard to see, but I filled and sanded them anyway. The engines will hardly be seen, so I just painted them NATO black and then gave them a dry brush and used them to me a silver. The air intakes in the engines have really nice locating tabs to make sure everything goes in straight. The wings are a bit more iffy to place, but with some dry fitting, it's easy to figure out where they go. Now these parts are a tight fit, and they need a bit of pressure to snap into place, but once you get them, they line up perfectly. The kit has three different positions for the tail, up, neutral, and lowered. I decided to go with lowered. Getting the correct angle for the rings is also easy to achieve. And here she is, the Phantom is mostly assembled and ready for painting, which we're going to be going over in the next video. Well, thank you all for watching, and if you liked it, please think about you know subscribing to the channel, and stay tuned because I'll have many more builds to come.